Good morning. I'm Marcia Riddle, and I'll be your litter just this morning. It's good to see everyone, and hope you all had a good Thanksgiving. And the sun is shining, and it's not raining, and hallelujah for that, huh? Glad to see you. We have um, a few announcements today. It's Advent time. And this morning, we will have someone lighting our Advent candle. The Messiah and the Festival of Lessons and Carols. The Gibson Area Music Foundation is planning a special and different type of Christmas program this year. That event will offer a few much-loved selections from Handel's Messiah, along with Festival of Lessons and Carols that will tell the Christmas story. The performance will be held Sunday, December 5th at the Gibson City Bible Church. And it's time again for the Giving Tree. Um, it's an opportunity for us to help kids in our community with winter supplies and Christmas gifts. We're hoping to provide coats and winter boots again to those who are in need. Using an online sign up, so if you need information on that, please contact the office and we can send it by way of email or text message. Coat requests are live on the site now. Gift requests will be added this week, allowing for ample time to purchase the gifts before the December 17th deadline. If you have any questions or would like to volunteer to be on the Giving Tree team, please contact the office. The Giving Tree team is a group of those wanting to shop or wrap or help with distribution and ideas. So keep that option open and let the office know if you're interested. Now time for the prelude. Now the prelude. Are we ready to worship God? Would you please rise for our call to worship? We'll say it together. It is the, our Advent call to worship, and we will be lighting the candle of hope today. Our reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2 and verses 6 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. I heard the Gaithers sing this once down at the assembly hall, and they go from, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus, you probably know that one by heart. But the one right next to it in our Methodist hymnal is 
There's something about that name. And so they put them together, and it was a wonderful experience. Let's experience that for ourselves today. Are you excited? Yes. Oh, I can tell. to have the children come forward you may be seated find a, somewhere to sit down. <clears throat> Good morning. I like the way you did that. That's cool. Good morning. Are you awake yet, Jake? Oh, just a second. <clears throat> hey, does anybody know what today is? Do you see anything different about the sanctuary? Well, there's decorations up, but it is not Christmas yet, is it? Christmas decorations. It was just Thanksgiving. Did you have enough to eat? I just thought I'd check. Okay. Still doing Thanksgiving 
you're doing Thanksgiving today? I thought so. Hey, it is the season of Advent. Can you say that word with me? Advent. It is the season before Jesus gets here, and a lot of people went to a lot of trouble to make sure others knew Jesus was coming. Now, before Jesus got here, see these things around peace, hope, joy, and the back one says love. We were trying to get people to experience those emotions. What does it feel like to have joy? Somebody show me joy. Show me. Hee hee. Woo hoo. Oh, okay, thank you. How about hope? What's hope? Go ahead and sit down. You're fine. Is his foot in your way? Oh my gosh. He's giving you a hard time, isn't he? You're <laughs> What do you do when someone gives you something? Let's just see. Um, hmm. You take one? Okay. You may have one. Okay. Yeah, you can have one. Yeah. Well, I'll let mom worry about that when he gets back to the pew. Okay. Sometimes I have to walk by faith. Everybody got one? What did I give you? Th thank you for saying thank you. That Thanks. Thanks. Oh, you grabbed one earlier? Huh? I see how that is. Okay. Well, that'll work into the sermon here in a minute, okay? Okay. You have two twos? Are you a dancer? No. I have two. <laughs> also. Two of those also. So, what are you going to do with the gift I just gave you? What are your options? Say thank you and eat it. That's one option. What, what would option two be? There you go. You're okay. Here. Nora, do you want to sit up here by me? There you go. All right. You could save it for later. Uh, 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 was that yours? You could give it away. <clears throat> this is the season to give God away. How would you give God away this season? Any ideas? Go ahead. Yeah, how would you go about that? Okay, let me share with you what he said. You could share your faith with someone else about who God is to you. If they believe, you might get a deeper conversation started. If they don't believe, what are you going to do? Oh, you're going to lay it out. You're going to explain it. All right, that's good. Any other ideas how you can give God away this season? Give gifts at Christmas. We're not at Christmas yet. I don't want to go there yet, Lemon. It's too, I know you do. He said, I said, we're not there yet. He, I, I don't want to go there. And he says, I do. All right. And so does Jake. You too? Okay. We have to get ready for Jesus to come. We have to prepare a way for him to come. And one of the ways we do that is by being nice to one another. Even before Christmas Day comes. Because we all know what happens if you're not nice. You'll have coal in your stockings. Isn't that right, people? Yeah. That's what happens. So I have hope today in you. I have hope. I have faith. In you now faith is hope not realized 
I haven't seen it come to light yet. I don't know if it'll be this way or not, but I hope it will. So Gabe, when you are out and about, would you look at people and just give them a smile? Give me a smile right now. Excellent. Thank you, Nora. We can all give someone a smile, can't we? Where's your smile, Jake? Is that it? That's your smile? Okay. Well, maybe you could offer a handshake. All right. Well, then, I'd like to end this time with some words of prayer. Is that a good idea? Yeah. You, re you ready, Nora? Here we go. Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for Advent and giving us a chance to get ready to meet your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up. Hey, incidentally, what is that called that you have in your hand? A mint. A mint, but it's a specific kind of mint. A lifesaver. Isn't that funny? Huh. Wonder who else is my lifesaver. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Our scripture reading today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. For what thanksgiving can we return to God for you? For all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnestly, night and day, that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all of his saints. Here ends the reading of our scripture. Now the Gloria Patre. by this singing from our choir.
Without question, this is a season of opportunity for you and I. <clears throat> millions and millions of people all around the world are spending a lot of time trying to have their soul filled. And a lot of people go about it in all the wrong ways. They look for fulfillment and happiness and love in all the wrong places. <clears throat> Back in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a cowboy movie that came out entitled Urban Cowboy. How many of you remember Urban Cowboy? John Travolta and oh my gosh, it was just the rage. But there was a guy by the name of Johnny Lee. <clears throat> Johnny Lee is Mickey Gilly's cousin. Did that help? <laughs> Not at all. But well, let me go over here for just a minute. <clears throat> there was a song in that, and the chorus of the song uh, went like this. I was looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in too many faces, searching their eyes, looking for traces of what I'm dreaming of, hoping to find a friend or a lover. I bless the day I discover another heart. Looking for love. How many of you remember that song? Well, we're in the season where people are looking for love. Advent is trying to find that place where we can find happiness and peace and love and everything that's represented in our Advent wreath. The hope for me is this. I hope I can be instrumental in that peace that helps someone else find love. The kind of love that endures forever, that never fades away. No matter if you're good or bad, happy or sad, the love never leaves us. Anybody looking for that kind of love? I need that kind of love in my life, don't you? I know that people are looking in the wrong places for love. Seems today that the most popular places that people hang out don't seem to be inside a church anymore. You know, there was a time when the church was a very popular place. That's where you might meet your future husband or wife. It might be the place where you got your first date. Not anymore. So, I tell you what, I thought maybe we could start something this year. <clears throat> and I know all of you aren't extroverts like me. I know that. I know introverts are all amongst us. That's okay, you can stay. <clears throat> Introvert wouldn't get up to leave even if they had to. <laughs> so, uh, I've got lifesavers out on the table. How many of you have taken one already? Come on, fess up. I know one. Nobody, two, okay. Three, uh, that, now it's come out. <laughs> I know all of you aren't like me. In fact, I've been accused of being the best biscuit giver that, he, that has ever been around. <clears throat> I think I'm the second best, but I had a friend in our first church <clears throat> down at Centerville, Illinois. After church, he came up to me and said, Rev, you're the best biscuit giver I've ever met. And I said, you're going to have to explain that to me, okay? He says, well, 
Once there was this old stray dog that came into the yard, and I couldn't befriend him. He would stay away from me, growl at me. I was afraid he was going to bite me. But I would go out and take a biscuit. <coughs> and I'd crack off a piece of that biscuit, and the dog would come towards me. So I started by throwing him out, and eventually that dog worked up to where he would come and take the biscuit right out of my hand. And that led to us becoming great friends. Me and that dog were inseparable because of a biscuit. And he says, I say that you're a biscuit giver because I have never seen you, meaning me, Ever not try to give somebody a biscuit? And I'm always trying to do it, trying to draw you in. It's my personality. I want us to be together as one. Amen. That's a good place to be. I can tell you're excited. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to read a card that came to me this week. It's... Uh, I would imagine the fella is watching right now on Facebook. He doesn't know I'm doing this, and I hope I make him mad because then I'll get a call from him. You know how that is? Pastor Gary, that's me. Sitting in a Bible study, we talked about who was our biggest influence in getting us involved with church. We thought we should write a card and say hi. So, hi. <laughs> but they told me it had to be more than just hi. So here we go. Hope you are able to make sense of this sense. This isn't one of my strongest bullet points. <laughs> From the time Deb and I met you at the bar, yeah, you heard that right. From that time on, I understood why God brought you into this fold. You just had that charisma that drew people in. You were just down to earth and you weren't afraid to get your hands dirty. Now, let me fill in a blank there. That day in the bar, it was in Gilman, Illinois, a place called the Red Door. Any of you ever been to the Red Door? It's a pretty good place, yeah. So uh, they were sitting there celebrating their life of love together, and I bought them a shot have any of you ever had a preacher buy you a shot? That was a biscuit. That was my biscuit. Now he says, I am so blessed to know you and call you my friend. And I am eternally grateful for you. And I incidentally buried his wife and wife's mother. Uh, that's mentioned in here. But I thought, we need to give God away this season, you and I. We need to invite and be around those people who are looking for hope, looking for love. And like I said, I know all of you aren't of the personality type that I am. Uh, last night when I opened that bag of life savers for the 5, 530 service, just about everybody got in it. Didn't even give me a chance to get to this point in the sermon. All right, you ready? Now whether or not you're extroverted or introverted, I want to to encourage all of us on this first Sunday of Advent to grab a handful of mints. Yeah, go out there. There's a whole nether bag if that one runs out. There's over 500 in that, those bags, I think. So 
like I did with the kids, offer a mint to somebody. Now, there are some people that are going to look at you like you have just given them strychnine. Okay, that's up to them. It's up to the person to accept the gift. That sounds really churchy, doesn't it? It's up to the individual to accept the gift that is coming Christmas Day, right? I can't force you to accept who God is sending at Christmas, but I can show you how he has changed my life. And so I offer this season as a season of hope that when you extend a mint, they'll take it. And if they ask you, why did you give me this mint? Say, I'm getting ready for Christmas. That's all you have to say. That's pretty safe, isn't it? Why'd you give me this mint? I'm getting ready for Christmas. Right? Now, I know they aren't very expensive. If you run out and you have to drive back to the church to get another pocket full, it's okay. Let's give all these there's a thousand mints out there there's a hundred of us here how many can you give away thank you big math Chris I'm glad you're here today ten do you think you can give ten mints away I don't care if it's even to your family member but give ten mints away if you run out and you're thinking this is kind of fun Go buy some more down at, well, I don't care where you buy them. I really don't. I'm not in the lifesaver sales business, you know. Uh, Last night during uh, the 530 service, did any of you catch a picture in the News Gazette of Ted Swanson? Ted Swanson standing there with a University of Illinois police officer, and (laughs) Ted reaches in his pocket and he has the Werther's butter candy, you know, the hard ones. <laughs> He's, uh, the caption, as I understand it, he gives the policeman the mint and says, have a sweet day, okay? <laughs> well, maybe we can do that this Advent. Maybe we can give hope in a right place and help someone find a reason to at least explore who Jesus is. <laughs> so, I want to encourage you not to be bashful. Get a pocket full of mints and go to work. Now, if you are a, an extreme, extreme introvert and you can't say because it's Christmas, we all can do this. You may have to get a piece of paper and write down, but keep track of the mints you give out. So, I just gave you a mint. I'm keeping track because tonight know that I'm going to pray for you. Even if you took the mint or not, I'm going to pray for everyone I offer a mint to. And just keep track of their faces. You may not know their names. Maybe make a little notch where you write down, oh, I I gave away 3,000 mints today. I think that's a wonderful way to start our Advent season and give people hope in the risen Jesus Christ. This is only part of the story, right, folks? Yeah. Well, that's all I've got for you today. It's not too much more, unless you want me to go on and try to make something up. It's up to you. So how many of you feel confident that you can take some mints out of the bags? Just wondered. Uh, About half. God, we're in trouble. I need to pray over that right now. All right. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. We are at our time for prayer. Let me afford you just a moment or two so you can center in and lift up those things that you need to lift up one-on-one, and then we will continue in our prayer time.
there is an amazing place inside each of us and it becomes warm and it becomes homey and we know that place is when you show up and I pray for everyone who is listening or watching or here with us today to realize the magnificence of the realness of God sometimes it takes a note to remind us of the blessings that you bring to us and I have to admit when I read this note I pulled up a little and my heart was strangely warmed and I found myself being encouraged I pray that each one will have that opportunity for someone to say to them you're the reason that I found God Through this Advent, we are praying that we will be a congregation that reaches out and offers. And that's all we can do, God. Your son came of his own free will. And as a baby, he showed us how to love from the very beginning. I realize that the world is in a place of devastation the way we treat one another, the way that leaders are speaking to other leaders. I know that we are in a place that is overwhelming and can bring much sadness. But I also know that you are the God that brings to us all that is good. And so we pray this morning for global situations for world leaders and folks who are trying sometimes successfully to bring your love into the world. I pray for our schools, for the arguments that are rising up because of vaccinations and COVID. I pray for all of the people who are in a place of healing those who are in nursing homes, facilities that are the places that keep us safe and more. I pray for everyone here that is struggling with an addiction or trying to figure out how to overcome a battle in their lives. I thank you for the harvest. Still pray for those who are finishing up. But most of all, I pray because your son's love is embedded deeply in each one of us. There's a possibility it hasn't taken light yet. And I pray that we will be part of the world that strikes a match and brings light into a world of darkness. The reason I'm able to pray like this is because of the certainty of your son's faith in us. He loved us so much that he said, Believe in me, and if you do, all is yours. All eternity is yours. And we're reminded of that promise every time we pray together and we say the prayer that starts like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before the ushers come forward, look around and say these three words to the people next to you. God loves you. Go ahead.
I would like to invite the ushers to come forward. Sure. You gonna take both of them? Share one with somebody. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, share that with uh, Jim, and we, we're back to the full-blown floor. Hey, Jim, go all the way over, buddy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the wondrous things that happen when we do this the giving and the receiving the blessings it it can't be measured by what is in this place but by the love that's in your hearts so may God rain down from heaven blessings upon you and fill all those spaces that need to be filled and that you will come to know his love because you decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Well, let's sing our closing hymn. <clears throat> Out. Okay. And the 
same thing with this one. Right here. And then keep that lit until you get back to the back, okay? And you don't have to be in a hurry. You can go on out if you want. Thank you. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Happy Advent.